Let's talk about the basics of parsing first and second declension nouns. So let's do first a review of declensions. And so it's very important when looking at any noun to determine what the declension is. And we do that by looking at the lexical entry. And if that lexical entry shows a genitive that ends in eta sigma or alpha sigma, ace or os, then we're looking at a first declension. And generally that will be feminine and we'll see some other things that go along with that as well. If our genitive ends in OU or omicron upsilon and the lexical form ends in omicron sigma or omicron noon, os or on, then we're looking at second declension. Finally, if our genitive ends in omicron upsilon and the lexical form does not end in os, omicron sigma, or on, omicron noon, then we look at the lexical form and if it has an eta sigma at the end, then we can be pretty sure that it is a first declension. Notice in this case that the genitive is Omicron Upsilon. This is a lexical entry here. These are the first three pieces of information that you'll get. And the definite article is ha, which tells us that it's masculine. So there's a few masculine nouns that are first declension. So what we've seen so far are genitives ending in ace or os, alpha sigma, or genitives ending in omicron upsilon. What happens if we have a noun that has a genitive ending in something other than ace, os, alpha sigma, or u, omicron upsilon? We're probably looking at third declension. And so here's some examples. We have gnosis. Our genitive is eos, epsilon, omega, sigma, and it's a feminine you see by the definite article, hey. Another example is pneuma, wind spirit, and it has a genitive ending of atas, so pneumatas would be its genitive. This is a neuter. The ta definite article tells us that this is a neuter. These are the lexical entries, the first pieces of information you see in the lexical entries that I'm showing you here. And one more example is ethnos. It has a genitive ending of us, omicron, upsilon, sigma. It's also a neuter. So in the genitive, anything other than an ending of eta sigma, alpha sigma, or omicron, upsilon is likely third declension. The next thing to look at is the article. The article is extremely helpful. If you have one, then a lot of your work is done for you. We're looking here at Mounts's Basics of Biblical Greek, 3rd edition. Here's the bibliographic information. We're on page 46. The article is worth memorizing because it never changes. And so, as Mount says, there are no more forms of the article, no more possibilities. And that's very helpful because when you see an article, what you see is what you get. There are no special forms. There are no weird exceptions. So if you have an article along with your noun, you're in good shape because no matter what that noun is doing, the article tells you what's going on. We are now looking at the next page of Mounts, Basics of Biblical Greek, 3rd edition. We're on page 47, and this is the full paradigm of first and second declension. The red writing I've added in to provide some added explanation. The nominative singular row that you see here across the top, this is the lexical form. And I've labeled that so it's clear that the lexical form is the nominative singular. The two, the one, and the two that you see refer to second declension, first declension, and second declension. This chart shows second declension masculine, second declension neuter, first declension feminine. As I said in the previous video, there are 
some second declension feminines, such as Hadas, Wei, there are some first declension masculines, as I mentioned, Prophetes and Mathetes, prophet and disciple. But for the most part, masculines are going to be second declension, feminines are going to be first declension, and neuters will often be second declension. So a few things to note here. Under feminine first declension, when the lexical form ends in eta, you'll see the other singular forms, so genitive singular, dative singular, and accusative singular also have eta. We have eta sigma, that's the genitive singular, eta with an iota subscript, that's the dative singular, eta nu. So we have ace a ain. When we have an alpha, as our nominative singular form, our lexical form, often we will have alphas showing up with the other forms. So alpha sigma for the genitive singular, alpha iota subscript for the dative singular, and then alpha nu for the accusative singular. For the first declension, we will see a few forms that combine and so we have, for instance, doxa, glory, has an alpha for its lexical form. But then the middle two forms, the genitive singular and the dative singular, have etas. Then finally, the, the accusative has an alpha. So this happens a few times. So if we have a lexical form that ends with alpha, we can tell that we are in either this column or this column because the lexicon tells us the genitive singular ending. If the genitive singular ends in alpha sigma, then we know we're in this column. If the genitive singular ends in eta sigma, we know we're in this column. Notice in all cases, though, that the definite article remains the same. He, tes, te, tain. He, Taste, te, tain, he, taste, te, tain. So, as I mentioned before, the definite article does not lie. The definite article remains constant no matter what is happening to the end of a noun. One other thing to note is that the plurals of the first declension feminines all have the same endings. The Mounts chart does not include the plurals for the second column, but I added them just so that we can see that they are consistent. You have alpha iota, alpha iota, omega nu, omega nu, alpha iota sigma, alpha iota sigma, and we have alpha sigma, alpha sigma. So those are all the same, and they're all the same over here under this final column that I added in. So that's the feminines. We'll also notice that under second declension masculine, we can note our endings as, u, o, an. Notice the iota subscript under that omega. And then oi, on, ois, us. And then over here are the second declension neuters. We have an, u, o, an. And then for the plurals, a, on, ois, a. Notice here that we have the nominative singular form we have this on ending, omicron nu, and the accusative singular also has omicron nu. So those are identical endings. And the article is the same also, ta. Notice also that the nominative plural has an alpha ending and the accusative plural has an alpha ending. And also we have the article is the same, ta. So for the neuter, it has this interesting property that nominatives and accusatives, both singular and plural, are identical. So that's just a little bit of, of interest. It doesn't affect us a whole lot. Occasionally, we have to consider whether something is nominative or accusative, but normally we can tell by context. Now let's look at some examples. Our first example here is 
Hemera. Hemera means day. The lexical form means day. The inflected form will carry more meaning with it depending on gender, number, case. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to look up the lexical form of this word. To use a lexicon, we want to find the stem of the word. So for example, for hemera, the stem is going to be the first part of this word prior to the ending. Now there is a little bit of debate about exactly what an ending is. In mounts, he will say that, for instance, for this word, achlus, the stem would go all the way through the omicron, so he'd have omicron, chi, lambda, omicron, and then the ending would be the upsilon sigma. Other people will say that the stem is the first three letters here, omicron, chi, lambda, and then the ending is the omicron, upsilon, sigma. For using a lexicon, we don't have to solve that question. I find it simpler just to consider the the OUS to be the ending, the Omicron Upsilon Sigma to be the ending, and then just look for the first letters. Coming down, we'd see Omicron Noon would be the ending. Here for Oikiai, we'd have the AI, the Alpha Iota, to be the ending. The Iota here would be part of the stem. An ending will never begin with an Iota. So here we have the Alpha. Here we'd have the Alpha Sigma, Alpha Sigma. Here we'd have the Alpha Iota Sigma, and then finally we have the Omicron Upsilon. So the stem is everything before the ending. And we use the stem then to go to the lexicon to find the word. So I can go to the lexicon in the Mounts book. I can look at really any lexicon, but there happens to be one in the back of the Mounts book, starting on page 395. And I need to find Hemera. And so I need to find the section for Ada. So I need to come down. I'm in Alpha now. I need to come down to Ada. So here is Delta Epsilon. I'm going to have Zeta, Ada. There's Ada. OK, so I need to find Hemera. So that's going to be Ada Mu. Here we go. So here's my, here's my entry. The lexical form ends in alpha, and the genitive is alpha sigma, which tells us its first declension. And then I see that it's feminine because of the definite article. So we come back over to our example. We know that it's first declension, and we saw from the lexicon that it is feminine. Now we need to figure out its number and case. Well, we notice that it's got an iota subscript under the alpha. You might have noticed that the date of singular row, every one of these has an iota subscript. And you will not see an iota subscript anywhere else. So if I see an iota subscript under a noun, notice that the articles also all have iota subscripts. If I see an, an iota subscript in a noun, I'm thinking date of singular. Pretty much thinking date of singular. So my lexical form, Hemera, ends with alpha. So I know we're first declension, feminine. We're going to look in this column for the ending now. I see, oh, well, there's an alpha with an iota subscript, which is what I have in my word. So I've got date of singular. I already know that it's first declension feminine. So I'm going to come back over to my chart. And so I have my number is singular. My case is dative. My lexical form I can find from my lexicon. I could have actually put that in before when I saw it. It is Hemera. So come back over and I'll type that in. There we go. Hemera. And my translation is going to be based on the dative. So a good default is to, get back to English font, to a day. 
Now it really could be in by with to a day. Any one of those would work. But a good default is just to use two. And it's, since there's no definite article here, I just say two a day. Perhaps you could make this by day. That's, that, that would also be a possibility. So two a day by day. Let's look at the next one here. We have Thanato. Now again, I'm seeing the IOTA subscript, so I'm already thinking date of singular. I look for the first several letters, the Thanat. That is the stem. Then I'm going to come over to my lexicon. We are quite close. The theta comes right after eta, zeta, eta, theta. And here's our entry right here. I look for Thanat. And then I've got my ending, Thanatas. Notice the genitive is Omicron Upsilon. And the lexical form, the nominative singular, is Omicron Sigma. So we have second declension. The definite article here, ha, tells us it's masculine as well. So I'm going to come over to my chart. And I notice that I've got second declension masculine. And then here's my omega with my iota subscript. Well, as I said, I already was thinking that it was date of singular because of the iota subscript. The only question was whether is it masculine, because I have an omega iota subscript, or neuter. I've got omega with the iota subscript over here under neuter. But I figured out that it was masculine from the lexicon. So now I have date of singular, masculine. So I'll go ahead and fill those in. We have masculine, singular, dative. And my lexical form I figured out from the lexicon. It is Thanatos, as we said. I'll come back over here and fill that in. Thanatos. Excellent. There's my lexical form. And then again, it's dative. So it could be to death or in death, something like that. To death, by death. Really depends on the context. Remember the dative, though, we need to translate it with this idea of to or in by with, something along those lines, when we have no other information. Let's take a look at this one now. We have oclus. So lexical form, we're going to want to look at the first letters here. We have omicron, chi, lambda. So let's go take a look at our lexicon. And we are at theta. We need to jump forward a little bit to get up to Omicron, what passed it. So Omicron, here we are. And so we're looking for Achlas. The key is near the end of that letter. So we'll come down here where here we are. Okay, so down we have Achlas. There's our word. That's our nominative singular. That's our lexical form. We have Genitive, omicron, upsilon. It is masculine. That's what a definite article ha tells us. And so we have the omicron, upsilon. The omicron, sigma tells us that we have second declension. And the definite article tells us it's masculine. And we know that we have a masculine. And now we're looking for the rest of the information. We have omicron, upsilon, sigma. So let's go back to our chart. Under second declension masculine, we're going to look and find, oh, here we go. Here is omicron, upsilon, sigma under accusative plural. The only place where we see that ending. So it's accusative plural. It's plural. It's accusative. We saw that our dictionary form, achlas, And the translation will be crowds. So we have a plural. 
our translation also has to be plural. It's an accusative, and so that would be the direct object. So it would be something like, Jesus saw the crowds. We don't have a definite article here, but we would just, so we would just say crowds. Okay, let's move on to our next one here. We have oikon, oikon. Now I can actually save myself a little bit of time. The stem here is going to be this Omicron Iota Kappa, and here's our ending, our Omicron Nu. Once you begin to get used to the endings, it's a lot easier to pick that out and then figure out the stem. So I'll just copy that stem, and copy it over here. That makes it a little bit easier later to, to type in the, the lexical form. All right, so now I'm going to go and look for this in the lexicon. And so I'll go to my lexicon. I'm already in the Omicrons, which is helpful. I'll come back up here. I want Omicron Iota, so I need to come back to the previous page. Here we go. Here's our stem. Notice there's several words here that begin with Omicron Iota Kappa. And we're actually going to come back to this one, Oikia. But there's a lot of words here. We have, for instance, oika despates, master of the house. Oika dameo, I build. That's actually a verb. But these have more to the stem. We're looking for stems that have only omicron iota kappa. And noticing here that this is really the only option that we have. Plus, we're looking for a noun. And in a lexicon, a noun will have the lexical form the genitive, and a definite article. Here is our lexical form, oikos. We have the genitive is OU, Omicron Upsilon. So that genitive, together with the lexical form that ends with Omicron Sigma, tells us that we have a second declension. And then the article, ha, tells us that we have masculine. So we're looking at a masculine second declension noun. We'll come back over. So here we can fill in our lexical form because we just saw it in the lexicon. And we know that we have a masculine. Oops, come back over to English. We'll have a masculine. Now we need to figure out the number in the case. So our ending is Omicron Nu. So let's go over to our chart, we know we're looking at second declension masculine. We're looking for Omicron Nu, and there it is. Shows up under accusative singular. So we come back over to our exercise here. And so we have singular and accusative. That would be a direct object, so we would just translate this as house. Let's come to our next word here. It's oikiai, and notice that the stem here is oiki. The ending is the alpha iota. Once you get familiar with the endings, it becomes easier to pick out the stems. So our stem is going to be oiki. I can copy that and paste it over here to make it easier when I come back. So I'll go to my lexicon, and I think we're already on the right page. Yes, we have oikia is right up here. Note that the only word that we have in our lexicon that begins with omicron iota kappa iota is this word. And the entry has the lexical form, the genitive, and an article, which tells us that it is a noun. The alpha sigma for the genitive tells us that we're looking at first declension and the eta as the definite article tells us it's feminine. We have oikia is the lexical form. It means house. I prefer household rather than house, but that's fine. We'll come back over to our exercises. And so oikia is our lexical form. I know that it's feminine. Now I need to Look at the ending, which is alpha iota. We'll come over to our chart. Lexical form ends with alpha. So I'm going to be looking in this column here. 
under first declension feminine, the right column. And I'm looking for alpha iota, and that's down here in the nominative plural row. My number is plural. My case is nominative. We've got the lexical form already. And since it's plural, I'm going to translate it plural. So households. Households were saved. Something like that. It's the subject of a sentence. Let's try another first declension example here. So here we have archas, and the root is going to be the first three letters, alpha rho chi. So I'll go ahead and copy that just for convenience and paste it over there in the lexical form. Generally, the stem was going to help you out in terms of your lexical form. Occasionally, you might get an accent that's a little bit different, but usually copying the stem is useful. Okay, we'll look for the lexical form. We have to go back now to our alphas, go back near the beginning of the lexicon. And so we are delta, here's alpha, alpha p, we need to move up. There we go, alpha rho, we're looking for alpha rho chi. Notice that there's quite a few that begin with alpha rho chi, although words that only have those three in the stem, only those first three letters in the stem, we have archamai, which is a verb. We have archon. So archon is a theoretical possibility. But if I go back over and look at what my actual word is, notice that it ends in alpha sigma. Notice my two options here, archon, it has antas as its genitive singular ending. This is a third declension. It's also masculine. My other option here is arche, and it's got an eta sigma genitive. Since my actual form is alpha sigma, I think it's a pretty good bet that we're looking at first declension. If I really needed to, I could go into depth and I could look at third declension nouns that end with omega noon and check out all their forms and it, I would find that there are no forms that end with alpha sigma but shy of doing that makes it a good guess that I'm looking at first declension feminine over here so I'm gonna go with this one come back over oh I copied that into the wrong slot there we go. Now I'll fill in the lexical form. And I know that it is feminine. And now I need to look at the ending. We have alpha sigma. I'm going to come over to my first and second declension chart. And I'm looking under this column because my lexical form ends with an eta. I'm looking for the alpha sigma. And here it is down here in the accusative plural row. So my parsing, it's feminine and it's accusative plural. So back over to my exercises, I've got plural, I've got accusative, and so my translation is going to be beginnings or rulers, the plural translation because it is a plural form. Since it's accusative, it'd be a direct object, something like he saw rulers. Let's look at one more of these first declension examples. This is a little more interesting. We have exousias, and the stem will be exousi. As you may have noticed, you've got the same ending as the one previous, the alpha sigma. And so we have exousias. We're going to look for exousi in our lexicon. I need to come down from alpha. I'm going to go down to epsilon. There's our deltas. There's our epsilons. And the C will be after the nu. So I'm looking for epsilon C. There's nu. Here we go. Epsilon C. And then I'm looking for an omicron. Here we go. So I'm looking for X to C. There's no other words that have that same stem. So we're safe here. It has the 
genitive. It has a article which tells us that we have a noun. And the alpha sigma tells us that we're looking at first declension. And the article tells us that it's feminine. So we have exousia, authority, power. So we'll come back over to our exercise. Go ahead and copy that and paste it. And then I can fill in my lexical form here, exousia. You note it's feminine. And now my ending is alpha sigma. Let's come over to our chart. Notice that in this column here, my lexical form ends with alpha. And we saw from the lexicon that the genitive ends with alpha sigma. And now I'm looking for alpha sigma. Notice I see it here, genitive singular, and down here, accusative plural. So that alpha sigma could be either genitive singular or accusative plural. Now, if there was an article there, that would tell us for sure because articles never change their form. But here, because of this alpha at the end of the lexical form, this genitive is a little bit different than in the cases where the lexical form ends with eta. So there we have eta sigma. Over here, we have alpha sigma. And that's the same as the accusative plural. So I have two options here. I have a singular genitive, or I have a plural accusative. The genitive singular would be something like of power or of authority. The accusative plural would be powers. So he set up powers. It'd be the direct object being the accusative. Authorities would be another option. So for a genitive, we put the of in front. For accusative plural, we need to be a direct object. We do need to give it the idea of plural, powers. All right, let's do one more. We have uangaliu. Okay, uangaliu. Our ending is our omicron upsilon. So our stem is uangali, all the way through that iota. So let's go take a look at that one. We're already in the epsilons here. And we got to go to epsilon upsilon. That's a little farther down. Here's epsilon upsilon. And it's going to be at the very beginning of the EUs because uh, of the alpha. So we have uangalizo, but we're not looking for a verb. Here it is, uangalion. The genitive, omicron upsilon, and the ending, omicron nu, tells us that we have second declension. And the definite article tells us that it's neuter. So we have second declension neuter. Our lexical form is uangalion, means good news. So we'll come back over here. I can copy that over. And then I can fill in the lexical form, uangalion. And our ending, omicron upsilon, we come back over to our chart. And we're looking now at second declension neuter. And our ending is omicron upsilon. And so that's the only place we see that ending. So our row is genitive singular. So we're looking at a genitive singular neuter. So we'll fill in neuter, Oops, back to English, neuter, singular, genitive. And the meaning here would be of good news. Once we see it in context, we might modify that a little bit. But, but our base gloss meaning in the absence of any other information is just of the noun when we're looking at genitive. So of good news. So these are some examples of parsing first and second declension nouns using a lexicon and a chart of endings.